So I had the honor of speaking after Chief Bell Harris in the, in the pipe ceremony, and it's really hard to follow somebody that talks and speaks that well, and I couldn't say very much. So I wrote it down this time so I'd be prepared. And then Denise just stole half. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, thank you very much for having me. I want to acknowledge the, the elders and, and that were in the piping, piping ceremony and, and, and Chief Belger for, for having us here and, and letting us be part of this. Thanks to Thomas and, and the whole FHQ team for doing all the work putting this together and trusting us to be your partner. And to my friend and partner, Denis, all the work you've done to grow us here in, in Regina and get, a, get us started here. And to all of our future customers and clients that are very important part of this. Thank you for coming out to, to, to be part of it. Um, I founded PQA in Fredericton, Brunswick in 1997 with the idea that I could do better than Frank McKenna. And I realize that that's a New Brunswick joke, but uh, I wanted to do more than create call center jobs. I wanted to create a reason. I thought I could bring real IT jobs you know, to New Brunswick. Since 1997, PQA has been the leading software testing company in Canada. And we've given more than 400 young people a start in IT as software testers. In, uh, in May of 2015, as Denise said, I, I was honored to be part of the Canadian Governor General's Leadership, Governor General's Canadian Leadership Conference. That brings 250 people of all walks of life, all across Canada, together, puts them on, in, a, in a room or uh, on a bus, traveling together to see different parts of Canada, learn about, learn about what happens in our country. And whenever, whenever you put that many people together, they're all for eight, eight hours on a bus and eight hours and seeing things and another three or four hours talking about it at the end of each day. There's an awful lot to get discussed. Uh, in May of 2015, if you recall, the, the Truth and Reconciliation Report came out. And that was, we had all those people with, with lots of time to talk and that was a big part of what we talked about. And it really, uh, a lot of it really sort of struck home with me, particularly the call for corporate Canada to do something, to break down the, the barriers to indigenous participation in the economy and, and technology, to diversify our workplaces, diversify our supply chains and, and, and our practices, our business practices. Um, one, of the, one of the neat things we got to do on our, on our tour, and Denis was on, the, on my group, we had dinner one night at uh, the Power Corp uh, head offices. And we had dinner on China that when you drank through the coffee cup, it was so fine shiny, you could see somebody, you could see the person you were obviously. And the next day we went across the river to Kanawagi. We went to a, a, a K to six school. Wasn't the, the, wasn't the mainline school, I guess. But they were teaching the, the children uh, uh, Mohawk language. And uh, when the little kids came around, we were all these people, big important people from all across Canada. The little kids came running out, the doors, the doors of school flew open, the kids came running out. And you could smell the water. You know, rotten egg, sort of bad water smell. And, I, and, and that really struck me that, you know, here we are, you can see the skyline of, of one of the most beautiful cities in North America. And you could smell the water in the school for K to six kids wasn't drinkable. And that's not right. That's, that's embarrassing me now. <laughs> so I wanted to think, how can we do that? How can we fix that? You see, too many times I, I see people underemployed. Too many, too many kids in too many communities don't finish high school. Not enough purpose, no direction, what to do. As, a, as uh, the... Uh, was said in the pipe ceremony, too many, too many kids graduate to finish school and there's nothing for them, no place for them to participate. How do we, how do we address that? How, what can we do? Charity won't change that. Um, I don't think money will change that. Money, money, just money doesn't change it. What I think will change it, what I believe will change it is opportunity. Equal honest work, equal, equal honest pay. No bring dignity and purpose to, to our, our youth, their coming, to the future. So I, I went back after, in June of 2015 and said, let's, let's, uh, let's take uh, what we do, which, which is software testing, and let's create a, a training course. Let's, uh, let's find a way to bring indigenous people opportunities, the same way that we did in New Brunswick for New Brunswickers, to 
or even opportunities in IT. We ship work to China or Ukraine or South America. We can bring work to Moussini or Fort St. John or, or you know, Fredericton or Miramichi and Regina. We can do work here. The goal of, of uh, Plato, which is a company that we created, is to train and employ a and create a network of a thousand indigenous software testers across Canada in, in, in offices in, in, in or near their communities. So bring the opportunities to the, to the youth. We developed a training course. And we delivered it for the first time in September of 2015. Uh, we've delivered it, I think, 13 times. I think the 14th time is running right now in Sault Ste. Marie. We started it last month. We promised everyone that completed the course would get a full-time job testing software for Play-Doh. Play-Doh now has offices in Fredericton and Miramichi in the Resident, in Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Toronto, and uh, Regina right now in, in partnership. I've committed that the Plato will be staff led and owned by Indigenous peoples. It is 95% staff by, by uh, staff that way now. It is led by Denis Carignan, who's the president, who joined to, to become the president and the C operating officer, chief operating officer of the company. And we're developing the leaders for the rest of the company from within the students that we're training. Uh, we're, we're working, we've, we've committed to having it be majority employee owned and we're working towards that. I want to tell you a quick story about one of our students, uh, a, kid, a kid named Ben Severay. Uh, uh, ben is a Soto from a Cote, Cote First Nation in Treaty 4. We, I met him in, we met him in Edmonton. He, was, uh, he, was, he took our Plato training course in Edmonton in October of 2017. He was uh, unemployed. He was living somewhere without really any purpose or direction and he thought he'd take the course. And thanks to our partner Utenau in, in Edmonton and, and, and Plato, he took the course, he completed the coursework, and we got him out an internship at Suncor in Calgary. In Calgary. And after two month, the two month internship was completed, we gave him a full time job offer. He took that, and he's working now as a team, part of a team of 25 people uh, in Suncor, doing software testing, testing uh, ServiceNow implementation, testing different applications. He's really part of the team. Uh, Earlier this year, he was asked to deliver a presentation to a group of senior Suncor executives uh, to describe to them his history. To describe to him the Ojibwe people that he's from, the Treaty 4 history, about Chief, Chief Gabriel Cote and about Olympian Bridget Laquette. La La he talked about the platform and showed about smudging and, and a sweat lodge ceremony and so much more. And that's in two years Ben's gone from unemployed, not sure where to go, to a full-time job working at Suncor with a living wage in Calgary, and teaching senior corp speaking and speak teaching senior corporate executives, executives about his people and about how to build bridges. That's success. Ben's very excited about the launch of Plato Saskatchewan. Plato Sask, sorry. And so am I. Plato Sask is a huge step along the path of what we're trying to do. It's our first Indigenous-owned member of the Plato Network. It will be a benchmark and model for future offices as we build the network from coast to coast to coast. Not, and not just other testing offices. We can also take this model and move, move it, use it to teach, build companies that do software development, work with big data or cybersecurity. In fact, some of our team in, in New Brunswick right now is going through a cybersecurity course and we'll be offering, Plato will be offering cybersecurity services out of New Brunswick. The world of IT is huge and it's at your doorstep. Is that your, your people's doorstep? Um, so I'll leave you with a thought. You know, Shoeless Joe Jackson in the, in the Field of Dreams, the movie Field of Dreams, which, which I think is a pretty good uh, uh, analogy for Saskatchewan as I flew in. Uh, unfortunately, those fields were kind of white flying this morning, but, but, they're, but it's a beautiful country. His line was, if you build it, they will come. Well, FHQ and PQA have, have built Plato Sats. We're going, to, we're going to be able to provide world-class testing services right here. But we need corporate Canada and, and, and governments, both provincially and federally, to come and bring the work. We need to consider the benefits of your company to your company, of using a local, benefits to the local economy and benefits to our society that you achieve by partnering with Plato SAS for all your testing and quality assurance work now and in the future. Um, this is not just a call for local businesses either. This is a call for all corporate Canada and 
for the media that's here today to spread, help us spread the word that Plato's asked and Plato are open for business and, and, and are delivering world-class services right here in Canada, right here in Regina. So I, I think the honest work for honest pay is dignity and pride. I think dignity and pride changes lives. So, good work.